Now we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee tonight for Jesus, the Son of God, who has come to the earth and died that we might have fellowship one with another. Wise blood cleanses us from all uncleansedness, brings us together in this fine time of fellowship. And we pray that He'll smile upon us tonight and give us of His blessings. We ask in Jesus' name, Amen. You be seated. Thank you, Brother Joseph. I'm unworthy of a compliment like that, but I know that I hope the Lord thinks that well of me when I leave the world. <laughs> thank you, Brother Joseph. You all pray for me today, and thank you too, friends, for your nice compliment. Big someone one time I was preaching and went out is uh, someone, some brother said, Oh, Brother Bram, I really appreciated that. Is the fellow standing there, he said, You know, I wouldn't have people to say that about me. But I don't like for people to say things. I don't like them to brag on me. I said, I do. <laughs> I said, there's just one difference between you and I. I'm honest about it. <laughs> and I think that's right. We all like for somebody to say something nice, don't we? Yeah. But, and then I believe Jesus likes for us to tell how we love him too, don't you think? That's right. Thank you. I'm just a little tired tonight. We had a service this afternoon, and, and so we... It's, this is eight straight nights now, so it's, I'm just a little bit tired, not much, but just enough that I can feel it good. I'm not sleeping at night, so what it is, I don't get enough sleep, and that's what kind of hinders me a little. Now, everybody love him tonight with all your heart? Amen. That's the way. That's fine. Now, tomorrow night, Friday night, and I'm trusting that Miss Branham will get to come up Saturday. I'm not sure whether she will or not. And um, I hope she brings Joseph along. You know? <laughs> you know, I remember little Joseph, about six years before he was born, I was over at Minneapolis praying. I was just reading the life of Joseph, what a wonderful person he was. And then there was, uh, I went into a little closet where I had my clothes hanging, and I pulled the door together, and I was just a weeping and, a, and thanking the Lord for this Joseph. And something just said to me, not a vision, but something just said to me, you'll have a boy. You'll call his name Joseph. So I thought, well, now that's fine. I thank you, Lord. So I began to tell the people about it. Well, immediately, about, oh, about a year later, though, there's a little baby born in our house. When it was coming on, some of them said, is this Joseph? I said, I don't know. I said, can't say that. For our other one had been a girl, four years since. And so then when the little girl, baby was born, it was a little girl. And you talk about wrath, I mean, especially my brothers, you know, brothers in flesh, they said, I thought it was right every time, Billy. I said, it is. Just don't worry. You'll be here. I said, oh, yeah. Media 35 years old and sexual birth each time. I said, I know it'll be here. I said, sure. I said, you sure of that? I said, I'm positive of it. I said, God always tells the truth. I'll have a baby and his name will be Joseph. And so they said, it can't be. Two year, one year passed, two, three, four, going into the fifth year. No, no Joseph yet. Uh, after a while, when Joseph come along, I was down at the hospital, and wife was up in the room, and here come the nurse down. Some of them said, is this Joseph? I said, I don't know. I said, I know Joseph is coming. I don't know where. I said, you'll be here. <laughs> nurse come down the steps. She said, Reverend Branham. I said, yes. Yeah. I said, you got a fine seven-pound boy. I said, Joseph, you've been a long time getting here, but I'm sure glad you arrived. <laughs> so I, when the Lord tells you anything, you believe him because he's going to do it. See, don't you worry. It may take a little while, but he'll do it in his own good time, won't he? And so we are loving because that's the way we can take him on any promise. Whatever he says, that's just what he's going to do. And we believe it with all of our heart. Now, looking down here in the, in the orchestra pit, is that right what you call it? Uh, I don't see many musicians, I don't think, but I see some taking the tape. Glad to see you, Leo and Jean, my and brethren down in there. I heard you had a sore mouth from bitten a tooth pull. Well, I'm glad it's better. <laughs> That's fine. All right. The Lord be merciful to us as we worship him tonight now. And I want to read for a text here, a little place found to continue on our service from where we were at last night in the book of Redemption. 
And I understand that Saturday is a, a breakfast and, and Sunday afternoon that my little brother Tommy Hicks is going to speak here. Is that right? And I'm sure you all will enjoy Tommy because he's just come back from Russia, from behind the line. And you know the strange thing about that, when he said he was going over there, we was all at the Christian businessman's breakfast, and he said he was going to Russia. And Mr. Fisher, he may be sitting here now, he's the attorney of the Christian businessman, very fine from way back in the early old Azusa Street, the Pentecostal. Very well looked up to man in all of the nation. And uh, so Mr. Fisher made a talk, and he said, well, I, I believe he's going to go over. And he said, well, why, Mr. Fisher? He said, well, the first thing, he said, the Russians, then, when they let him come in, said, then they'll find out really who is Christians and who's not, the communists. And said so another thing, they'll think, that poor little silly boy ain't going to do no harm over here, so they let him in. <laughs> so they, they did. But I imagine he did do them some harm, because he's a, he's a preacher of the gospel and a good man with it. So I'm thankful that he was over there. Now, the strange thing... I just stuck my neck out a little far, and I said, Now, Tommy, if you go and get back, then I'll go. <laughs> so I don't know now. Now I'm in it. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to go, all right, but I, I hope it's the leading of the Lord <laughs> when we go in there. Uh, now, over in the Gospel of uh, the, now the book of Exodus, rather, the 14th chapter, I like the ending up of this 13th chapter, the pillar of fire, a pillar a fire that led the children of Israel through the day and night. In the daytime it looked like a cloud, and at nighttime it looked like a pillar of fire leading Israel. And that was the angel of the covenant, none other than Jesus Christ himself, before he made flesh and come in the womb of Mary. It was Christ. Moses followed Christ. Christ said, the scripture says, that he was in the wilderness with Moses. And that's who he was, the angel of the covenant. And now in the 15th verse, we read this. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. I kind of like that, don't you? May the Lord add his blessings to his word. Now, tonight is midweek, and I was tonight going to call up all the people that had their prayer cards. But after I started over here, I just so tired, I think I'll just go ahead and have the regular service for the sick, and maybe tomorrow night, if God willing, I want to pray for everybody's got a prayer card tomorrow night. Brother Moore even told me, and Brother Brown, that's the way we first started out, they said, we'll come to the platform and help you, Brother Brown. And they always anxious for me to get back into those types of service, and I'm just as anxious to get back to it, too. It may be a little strange for a while, but it'll work right around to far more exceeding than what it is now. And so tomorrow night, everyone holding a prayer card will be called to the platform. I think they got out prayer cards. I asked the boy just a few minutes ago and brother in there that if there's any prayer cards to give out, they said there's already about 200 out, uh, I's and K's, and said that uh, them letters, and said that uh, if I wanted to call some night, I'd call from some of them, and then tomorrow night... We pray for all of them. Now, last night we was talking and running a series of, of scriptures of the book of Exodus. We find out that the Exodus meant the calling out, God separating his people from the unbeliever. And then along as he taken, them, we find out in the scripture that there was a mixed multitude that went up. And that's what got the real believer in trouble because it was a mixed multitude multitude. They was the one who melted their earrings and so forth and made a calf and to go back into Egypt. Now, when the, the phenomenal is done, the miracle of God was performed and everybody rallied to it. And then a mixed multitude followed out because they were going, they were circumcised and kept the Passover and so forth. But still they were a mixed multitude, unbelievers with the believers. And it uh, finally showed up on them. Now, then we find out that there were three great principles that we were going to talk on. And that, and this book of Exodus called out, separated, and also a book of redemption. And the three principles we were going to talk on was the power of the devil, and the power of faith, and the power of God. And last night we found out 
that the devil does have a power, and that power is death. And after death, the devil can do no more. He's finished at death. And how did he brought the uh, Moses right down when he found out that he was going to be born? Why, he killed all the children along trying to cut off God's servant that was to be a chosen vessel. How he did the same thing by Abel when he seen how the line of Abel was going to come the righteous seed. And then God, of course, brought Seth in to take his place. And then in the royal seed in Chronicles and also over in the book of Matthew, Jesus, how he killed all the children trying to cut off or to stop God's program, but there's no way at all of ever stopping God's program. Right. Here not long ago, they made a proclamation that you couldn't shout no more and all these things. is go to try to pass it in Congress that they'd stop all the doors and ever people that didn't belong to a certain denomination, when the Confederation of Churches united and going in now to form the mark of the beast for this nation, this world, when they all confederating themselves together, they were going to pull every door and shut every door and they will do it sometime. And everybody that don't belong to a certain denomination that's in this confederation of churches will have to take the mark. And doing so, well, then they think then that they'll stop all of this stuff like divine healing and all these things that the, that the churches don't accept. But they'll never do it. You can't do it. God's church will move on just as sure as the world. They've tried that before, fed them to lions and burned them to the stake. But God's church moved on just the same said the gates of hell cannot prevail against it, showed that all the gates of hell would be against it and the powers of hell, but it would never prevail. God would move right on with his church. It always will be that way. They've tried to stop it. They've tried to burn it out of people. They've tried to feed it to lions and the lions wouldn't eat it. And so they, they've tried a lot of things to stomp out this old time religion, but it'll be good on until Jesus comes. Amen. Amen. So there's no way of stopping it. The devil's a shrewd fellow, all right, and he carries the power of death with him. But that's all the farther he can go, is death. But then we find out then that faith stepped in then. At the death, then faith stepped in and recognized a God of resurrection. No matter when we go at the grave and lay our loved ones down, the tears falling from our cheeks and sadness and see a young mother with her baby on her arm like I did to my own wife. And all those things standing there, I remember that day standing there with little old Billy Paul hugged up against me, a little bitty 18, about 18 months old baby, holding him in my arms and looking at his mother and little sister, laying on the arm of the mother as they lowered him down. And the minister picked up a bunch of dirt and said, ashes to ashes and dust to dust and earth to earth. And I heard those clods dropping in the face of my baby and wife. Who my, my heart was tearing out. But standing there, listen, coming down through them old pine trees, there seemed to be a song coming. There's a land beyond the river. See? Right in the midst of death where I seen what Satan had done. Just beyond that, I seen the resurrection. I am the resurrection of life, saith God, he that believeth in me. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever, what was it, his faith. I walked over there and I said, God bless you, honey. Rest your souls in peace and someday I'll see you again. Amen. Amen. Here not long ago, Billy and I had taken a little flower to his mother's grave. It's been, he was just a little laddie yet, about eight or ten years old. Coming down to the grave, he began crying. It's just for daylight. I set the flower down. He had his hat in his hand and we knelt down by the side of the grave. He put his head over on me and began crying. He said, Daddy, my mother lays there. I said, no, no, uh-uh. Your mother's there, see, not there. I said, honey, we're looking across a mound here. See, it's heaped up. I said, because I put her in a concrete box. I said, it won't fall in, but there's a mound here that's heaped up. But way across the sea, there's one that had the doors broke on it. And and the one who raised from the dead said, he that heareth my words and believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I said, they were in his arms safely. So beyond all this dark cloud that we see, faith catches a glimpse of the resurrection over yonder of a God. So I'm so thankful that there is hope beyond the grave. And faith that brings us to that place. Though uh, faith may take its, its position on the rock of God's word and all 
the waves of hell beating against its foundation, it'll take its eagle eye and soar beyond them clouds and see the God of resurrection and promise. I'm so thankful for that tonight. And I know you are. And every believer is saying, we have an anchor. Amen. That's in the veil. We can't see it sometimes, but we know it's there. Like the little boy was flying the kite and said, where is it? He said, I can't see it. He said, I know it's still there because I can feel it. <laughs> so that's right. We may not be able to see it. Times gets dark. The clouds may hide his blessed face for a spell, but remember, the clouds may hide his face, but it don't hide him. It can hide the sun from you, but it's still shining beyond the cloud. And faith sees the sun beyond the cloud. And here was Moses' mother in the conflict of testing of her faith. And every child, every son that cometh to God first must be tried. God tests your faith. Now, it looked like God could just simply bypass the whole thing and don't have any appropriate way and just cut the thing off. But it's better that he gives you a test and then comes to you when you're in the test. I like that, don't you? The greatest experiences in my life is when I come up against a mountain that I can't get over it, under it, or around it. And just stand still and God will move the thing back. And you will move no matter how dark the cloud is. Faith peers it down with an eye that looks beyond anything that the devil can set before you. Because God is our victory. Amen. Amen. Even death itself has no terriers. No wonder the believer can stand and say, Oh, death, where is thy sting? And grave, where is thy victory? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the faith that maketh not ashamed. That's the faith that overcomes. And now, this mother, with her only baby, as far as we know, no, I beg your pardon, it wasn't her only baby. She had another one, Miriam. So we, the mother with her little baby laid into a little slime pitched uh, bulrush made basket that by faith, that God moving by revelation. Did you know the whole church of the living God is built upon the revelation of the Lord Jesus? Amen. In the Garden of Eden, after the children of Israel, uh, pardon me, after Cain and Abel and them were turned out of the garden, did you notice how that Cain being not a communist who came and worshipped the Lord and and offered a sacrifice and, and done all he could. Very religious. Cain was. But Abel, he came not with works, but by faith, the Bible said. He offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than that of Cain. God testifying that it, he was righteous. Because he seen the program of God which was revealed to him. Now, they hadn't, the Bible wasn't written then. So if Cain, his brother, who sat under the same teaching of father and mother, came down and brought fruit to make the offering, but Abel, by revelation, he saw that it wasn't fruits that brought us out of the Garden of Eden, as some people still think it was, but it wasn't fruits. It was the blood of his mother who made him mortal, or his father. So he came and offered the blood of a lamb by divine revelation. No one to tell him anything about it, but he by faith, he seen the Son of God coming and offered a lamb in a figurative type, seeing that Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And God testified, that's the truth. God will always testify the truth. That's the reason I'm so happy when we can introduce to the nations of the world a resurrected Jesus Christ. It's not a fiction story, a story of fiction. It is an absolute positive Amen. statement of Jehovah God Himself that He raised up Jesus from the dead. And it can be proven. That's the good part about it. Now... Cain, when he seen his brother, of course he slew his brother, was jealous. But notice how Abel got this. Now Jesus, when he come to the earth, 
coming down off the Mount Transfiguration one day or off the mountain. They said, who does man say I the son of man am? And some of them said, well, some says you're Moses and some Elias and some so forth, the prophet. He said, but who do you say I am? Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he turned to Peter and said, blessed art thou, Simon, a Jonah, the son of Jonas, in other words. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. You never learned it by any reading. You never learned it by any seminary. You never learned it by any scholarship. See, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed it to you. And I say, Thou art Peter. And upon this rock, what spiritual revelation that Jesus is the Christ, not mental conception, but spiritual revelation. Flesh and blood has not revealed to you, but my Father which is in heaven, has revealed this to you, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What is it? A revelation. What is faith? Is God, by the Spirit, revealing to you something that He's going to do or He's promised? Now, if you only hear it, faith cometh by hearing, but hearing is not faith. A loaf of bread is purchased for 25 cents, but 25 cents is not the loaf of bread. See? Hearing does. Hearing only brings the word that produces faith. But faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Then you see, you hear the word, God reveals it to you that it is the truth, and by spirit revealed truth confirms your faith to God. You get it? Now notice. Then, that's the church that God built upon the rock that the gates of hell can't prevail against it. Now if we'll notice how that Miriam, the, or, not, or Moses' mother, rather, when she was standing there with her baby to lay it in death, every male child was thrown into the river as soon as it was born. You see, it was a male, pitch it out into the river. And here stands the mother now, Knowing that he was the proper child, he was God's predestined son. I don't, the word predestinate, that's not a good word to use. The word foreknowledge is better. Predestination looks back to foreknowledge and foreknowledge looks to destination. But God not making, setting an order, a little hole that you have to go through and can't go no other way. But God, in order to be God, He knew the end from the beginning so He could predict it and set things in order to happen. Now, notice, by God's wise providence, He had revealed by spiritual revelation that this was going to be His chosen vessel and His mother wasn't as scared of the King's commandments. For by faith she saw him with the children of Israel, placing him over in the promised land. Amen. Amen. What a eyes of faith, what a power faith has. Oh, it goes so far beyond the devil's power. The devil takes you to death, but faith looks beyond that. The devil shows you the graveyard, said, you're everyone going. That's right, but thanks be to God, we're coming again. When Jesus comes, those that sleep in Him shall come with Him. So faith is much more powerful than anything the devil has. The devil can put out scarecrows and everything else and make you shadows and say you're going to die in the morning and this is the last hour and this is that and the other. But that don't scare the believer. He's just a bluff. If God reveals to me it's not going to happen, I don't care what he says. I'm going to come out of it anyhow. When Mayo brothers told me I just had a few days left in my body of life that I was going to live, I believed him. I said, well, it looks like I'm gone. Then the Holy Spirit revealed to me, your ministry is just beginning. Hallelujah. No matter what my old brother said, I didn't think of what they said. I thought what God said. Amen. Here not long ago, standing in a hospital with a young fellow 
about six, seven years ago, maybe a little better, a young man dying with black diphtheria. The old dad called me to go pray for the baby, or the boy, rather. He's about 15 years old. And the boy was dying. And uh, the doctor, he wouldn't let me go in. He said, you can't go in. You've got children of your own. I said, but I'll take the risk. He said, well, you'll take diphtheria to your children. I said, if i got faith enough to go into the diphtheria, i got faith enough that God won't let my children take it. He said, you can't do it. The man was Catholic by faith. I said, now, if I was a priest standing here and was going to give the last rites to that boy, would you let me? Oh, I said, that's different. So I said, no, it isn't. This is just as sacred to us as the last rites would be to you. Well, I talked to him. <laughs> so he went up and dressed me up all over in white and, and put a big thing over my face. And I, I couldn't hardly see where I was going. Here I come through there with a gown dragging way behind me. You'd have never known me then. <laughs> I walked down through there. It's all right. That's, there's one way of getting there. <laughs> that's following the rules. Always play the game square and you'll win. So I went out through there and the mother and father went along. There lay the boy dying. Been unconscious two days. I went around, I tried to talk to him, he wouldn't talk, so I knelt down, looked at the father, and he looked at me, the tears was in his eyes. I laid my hands up on the boy, and I said, Dear Heavenly Father, you said I am the resurrection and life. You was the one who promises these things, and this father, this child has called me here to pray, believing that you sent me to pray for the sick. And this I, Father, pray with all my heart the prayer of faith that would touch your garment. And with unfailing faith, as far as I know in my heart, I believe for this young man to recover. I said, I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Raise up. Oh, Father looked over Mother and said, Oh, Mother, isn't it wonderful? The boy's just as gone as he ever was. And he said, Oh, I'm so happy. And the little nurse standing there weeping, she turned around and she said, um, Sir, I don't understand. Said, Do you know your boy is a dying? Said, No, ma'am, I don't. <laughs> he said, Well, now you see, he said, he said um, uh, th- uh, My boy's not dying, my boy's going to live. Great. Said, God promised it. And he said, Why, well, uh, look, it's good to have faith, she said, Sir. But said, I tell you, she said some kind of a cartogram or what they're doing, some kind of machine they'd put on his heart, and said when it ever goes down like that, it's never been known in all medical history for it to ever come back again. So the boy can't live over about three to four hours. And that old man, I never will forget, he put his hand up on the shoulder of that little young lady, probably in her late teens. He said, Sister dear, he said, you're looking to that machine. That's all you've got to look to, but I'm looking at a divine promise. Amen. Amen. The next morning, the boy took his breakfast, and he's married and got a child now. See, the woman, all she knew was to do just what that machine said. But this old man looked faith pierced beyond that. And he saw God who was able to do the exceedingly abundantly. The God who had promised never to fail us or leave us or forsake us. He depends on what you're looking at. The Christian looks at things they don't see because they walk by faith. Is that right? We believe it because the Bible has said so. They believe it. That's how we believe is because God said so. Faith tested, tried. It proves out 100% God's under obligation to Answer that faith. Look what it did, that mother standing there. As she put her baby into the same death that every other baby had went into. And a little basket about so big with a baby laying in it. Probably a about three months old baby. Laying in a little basket about so long. Nothing but a bunch of rushes like willows. Laced together with some pitch and slime messed in it. And push it out into the flags where the crocodiles and everything else was. But why it meant death was well, sure. It was right in the same river of death. But by faith, an atonement was made for it. By faith. Not by act of natural laws, but by faith. 
Natural laws would have just proved the alligator smelt the baby. That was it. See? Or out there, the first little wave would have tipped it over. That would have settled it. But faith looked beyond that. She knew that the hand of God was on that baby. Therefore, she wasn't afraid of what the king said. And look what faith done. Faith took him out of the river of death and resurrection. Took him over to Pharaoh's palace. And raised him and educated him right in the palace of the devil's instrument. If that wasn't one time God pulled the wool over Satan's eyes, <laughs> Pharaoh was the devil's instrument who was killing the children. And the very children he was going to kill, God sent his instrument back and made him raise him. Hallelujah! Don't try to outwit God. God works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. Hallelujah! Pharaoh... The hard-hearted, demon-possessed man who was killing every Jewish baby because the devil had anointed him brought the king of them in and raised him and educated him and fed him and besides that brought his mother over for a nurse for him. Amen. That's what faith will do. The mother saw that. By faith she saw that. That's the reason she went down there and stood and waited for her daughter to come talk call her to be the nurse. See, she already had it in her mind because God had revealed it. Amen. If God reveals to you tonight that your sickness is gone through the atonement, just as that revealed to that mother, it's finished. Amen. Amen. The power of faith. She placed her baby right in the jaws of death with the power of faith to know that he'd raise up again. Amen. Placed him right smack in the jaws of death. Sometimes trials are brought up on us. People say, oh, I wish I didn't. Have. God, they say, I'm a Christian. Why did this happen, Brother Branham? God let that come up on him so he could show your, his love to you. So he could prove to you, I'm the resurrection in life. Hallelujah. Glory. Death says, i got a right. The king's commission is to drown all the babies. Put them in the ocean. She said, I'm putting him in the ocean or in the, the waters. Under this, by revelation, I have prepared a way of escape. Yes. Amen. Yes. And she laid him in death, and faith brought him out and made him the son of Pharaoh's daughter and made her the nurse. See how God did? God altogether was working to his own glory. And just put it right under Satan's nose and say, I just want to show you how blind you are, Satan. <laughs> put the baby right under his face and made Satan feed him and take care of him and nourish him up. For the very man was going to destroy the whole nation and lead the people to victory. Hey. Hallelujah! Hey. Oh, our God is marvelous. Hey. Have faith stronger than death. Certainly, his faith is stronger than death. So here goes the power of faith moving. And now notice, now in, in daytime he was, I guess Egypt was the greatest military nation in the world, the great commercial center of all the world. And no doubt the what Moses had the ROTC training and everything else. God had to train him like that because he was going to lead an army. And God made Satan train Moses to lead an army that would destroy himself. Hallelujah! That's the power of faith. By faith she saw that. And not only that, but she made arrangements for it. She placed the baby into the atonement and walked out here and stood on the bank waiting for her call to be come. Glory! <laughs> there you are. <laughs> waiting. For the time, for by faith she endured seeing him who is invisible. She knew this was a proper child. She knew what God had promised. The time of the deliverance of the children was drawing nigh, and she knew this was the baby. Amen. And now, in the daytime, the chief officers, the best training that could be brought, his dinner was brought on a platter by Satan, feeding him. 
Oh, my, as it was today, fried chicken, steak, potatoes, and tea, everything. Him sitting back there, and God said, you see what I can do, Satan? You're not so great after all. See? We put him in death like you required, but that mother see what I'm going to do, you know, through Jesus Christ, to all peoples that believe in me. By faith she done it. And when Moses was well trained as a real officer, because he, Pharaoh thought he'll leave, after he had his foot on the throne, and Pharaoh said, someday he'll be the Pharaoh. And then when he trained him the very best, and it was God doing all of this, because while the Amorites Amari, and them had not a chance with that well-trained man, Moses, when he set his army in order out there and started up with him. But certainly not. He took him just like Grant did Richmond. He, they had nothing to do into it. I'm telling you, he went right on. Because he was trained in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. And then after his schooling was over, his night study was over, mother taking him into the bedroom, and she was training him. Hallelujah! A teacher of righteousness. So you see, every mother's a preacher. <laughs> she's got a little she, she's got a, a little congregation of her own at home. So she trained Moses, telling him. I said, Mother, I understand. Now, we've had all the training today, but now what was you saying that Jehovah was going to do? And she began to read to him by faith. And when he became the age to take the throne, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. For by faith, hallelujah, he seen what it was done for his mother, and he took the same thing. I see what it's done for Paul. I see what it's done for Peter. I see what it's done for others. I want the same thing. By faith. No matter how dark the cloud looks, that don't make the sun shining just beyond there. We'll move right on until the sun shines. The storms cannot hide his blessed face. <laughs> Amen. Oh, he's not promised smooth sailing, but he's always promised, I'll be with you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What difference does it make? How much storm there is as long as he's around. The waves and the winds obey his will. Amen. Now, oh, we could take hours on that. That wonderful thing of faith. How he kept the Passover by faith. How he met God and talked to him by faith. He went out and kept the Paschal Lamb came out and was on his road. God, doing all this through the power of faith. See what faith will do? Now, they led him right out on the road to the promised land. You know all the contest between God and Pharaoh down there? How by faith he did this, by faith he did this, and by faith he did this. And now, on our text tonight, we find them on their journey and they look out yonder, and there's the Red Sea, mountains on both sides. And they lifted up their eyes and looked back, and there comes Pharaoh with all of his army, yeah. <laughs> all of his trained soldiers, his chariots, and his, a captain of each chariot, and so forth. Here come a great cloud of dust, while tens of thousands, yes, perhaps a million or more, armed man comes. And here this bunch of little sheep was backed up with a drove of wolves coming on them. Then what happened? Just the human, just like we all do. It wasn't there enough graves down in Egypt that we could be buried there. That's the way we think. They'd forgot what all faith had done for them a few days before. That's what we do. The first little pain hits us after you've been prayed for. Oh, well, I guess I lost it. Oh, my. And you hear them coming to the platform, been healed of cancer, blinded eyes have been opened. Those who are lame walk again and all these things. And we see it, look at it, examine it, go right on moving. And then the first little conflict comes along. We forget all about that. See the Lord Jesus in the power of his resurrection. But we so quickly forget that's the human part of it. But they've seen it. And they were helpless. Now what a place. Would you imagine a people that walked reverent before God, that's kept every one of his precepts. They ate the Paschal lamb. They sprinkled the blood. They followed every instruction just as Moses gave it, reverently. And then 
God led him right out there and trapped him. Oh, my. Helpless. Not a thing they can do. Here's the Red Sea. Here's the mountains on either side. And they're right back in the little neck. And here comes Pharaoh's army. God led him in a trap. Oh, but my. God draws the blueprint of their journey before the world was ever made to pass through there. Hallelujah. Don't think I'm crazy because I holler hallelujah. I can't help it. I blow up my belief of it. Hallelujah means praise our God. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise our God. Hi. That's one word I can speak in German. <laughs> or any of the rest of the language, even to the hot and tops in South Africa. No matter where, the same word, hallelujah, is the same. Praise our God. Now, here they are, all cornered up. God pushing his children right out that part of, e of uh, Egypt, coming right up along and trapped them right in this place. The God of heaven was leading them by a pillar of fire and brought them into this trap. Now, unbelief will say, why? Why did he do it? Look, as immediately after they got out of that, they went right into the wilderness of sin. Right out of there into the murmur, everything. God leads his children through these kind of paths. Amen. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through deep trials, but all through the blood. <laughs> Amen. That's the way. Just follow. Don't make any difference where he's leading. Just keep following. And that's what Israel had done and walked right into a trap. But the human side had forgot all the miracles, forgot all the great gods that had been leading him. And begin to wonder, what can we do? Then Moses cried to the Lord. And a voice came back, stand still. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And see the salvation of God. Yeah. See what? Salvation. Now, God, the display had been proven by Satan. Death in the river. Faith, the power of faith, had been proven by the... Annihilation, leaving Egypt and all the things they had done. Faith had proved that it was powerful. Now, what about God? Now they're in a trap. Now it's time for God to display something. The people couldn't act no more. They'd follow every precept and was in a trap. Now it's time for God to act. Right. Say, why did he do it? To show them his love. Maybe that's why you got sick. He wants to show you his love. He wants you to get to the end of your road one time. You know, sometimes it's too bad, but God has to lay us on our back so we look up once in a while. Is that right? Yes. He wants to show his love. He wants to show his power. God likes to manifest his power. He told Abraham 440 years, before, 420 years before that, or 440 it was, before that time, that he would bring the children of Israel out under a mighty hand. God has to keep his promise. The same God that said he would bring them out under a mighty hand and fulfill it to the letter, the same one said, if they shall lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. He'll fulfill it to the letter. No matter how many critics and people raised up with their theologies and mental conception of the Word without revelation, God will keep His Word anyhow. Amen. Amen. I'm not yelling at you. This thing's got an awful voice, and I'm feeling awful good right now. So I try to back away from it. Notice, seeing God come in action. Isn't it wonderful? Here some time ago at Harleys in Texas, I was down there a little... One night going into the hotel where I was staying, I heard a woman cry. And I thought, somebody in trouble. I turned around to look, and as I was coming through a little place, there was two young girls in their old, probably early 20s, uh, 21, 22 years old, was standing there, a blonde and a black-headed girl. They had their arms around one another weeping. And I said, pardon me, miss. Could I? I said, I'm a minister. Could I help you? 
And she said, yes, Brother Branham. <laughs> I knew she knew me. Now I said, what's the matter? She said, we seen we couldn't get a prayer card and get in the line. We know what hotel you're staying in. So we stayed right here. Thought maybe your shadow might pass over my little friend and be healed. Oh, my. I said, what's the matter? It says it's mental. I brought her here. Standing there in that great faith, not a make-believe, but a real faith, a vision broke forth. I said, yes, you come from northern Texas near Lubbock. I said, you brought her here in a yellow Buick car coming along where there's a half of the road was concrete and the other half was, was um, a tar. I said, you started turning the corner and you were both laughing, had the top down. You almost had a wreck. And she just screamed the top of her voice. And I said, and thus saith the Lord, she's healed. That's right. And there... Next day, she liked to set the town afar. She stirred the nest of the devil. Let me tell you, if you want the devil stirred up, just start preaching divine healing. Amen. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, and 3,000 souls were saved, and Satan never even moved. But the couple days afterwards, he healed a man at the gate called Beautiful, who was lame, and all hell turned loose on him. That's right! The devil don't like to see God display his power. He thinks he's got a lot of power, but he's, he's finished. <laughs> Amen. Our Christ is predominant. Take the initiative. Don't let him push something on you. That same day, a couple days after that, here come the little girl's bro brother Baxter come in and said, Brother Branham said the fat's in the fire. I said, what's the matter? Oh, they said, that, said they go to uh, expose you tonight as Simon the sorcerer. I said, oh, is that so? Said, yes, yeah, said Brother Branham. They got cards out all over the city and said, them two girls, you know, the ones was healed. I said, yes. Said, they're downstairs crying, packing up her clothes to go home. Said, oh, it's pathetic, Brother Branham. I said, what's the matter? He said, well, they said that they hate it because their testimony had stirred up such an awful row down here. They were Methodists. And so they said it stirred up such a row that they was going to, the FBI was going to get you tonight and expose you as Simon the Sorcerer. Well, I said, if that's right, I ought to be exposed. See? I said, Sure. He said, well, uh, you better go down and talk to him. said, they're downstairs. And I, I said, what room then? He told me. And I went and knocked on the door, and they were crying, packing their clothes. Oh, said Brother Brennan, we're so sorry. I said, what you sorry about? I said, <clears throat> she said, oh, we caused so much trouble. We've got you in trouble. I said, you have? Over oh, getting someone healed? I said, you ain't got me in trouble. You got the devil in trouble. I said, That's, he's the one in trouble, not me. And he said, well, Brother Branham, she said, we're so sorry. He said, we sat down by a woman today. And she said, aren't you with the Branham party? He said, no, ma'am. said, oh, yes, you are. He said, no, I just got healed over there in a, in a hotel the other night. He said, listen, he said, that man is a witch. He said, we know it. <laughs> Why, she said, here, lady, my, my friend who come with me was going to the insane institution to test her. She's perfectly normal. I said, oh, yes, I know. I put a boy in my meet, in his meeting one time. It had TB. And he went up there and done his hocus-pocus over it and said the baby got over the TB, but it was the devil. And anybody don't know no more about that and know the devil has not one power or nothing to heal. I challenge that. If the devil can heal, he's in, he's in cahoots with God. I'm the Lord who heals all thy diseases. The devil has got... That was a great contest between... Um, the, the Egyptians down there, when they brought up their soothsayers and so forth, they could perform things, but they couldn't heal. Every time the, the, the magicians would do something, Moses would do something, they'd pattern it. But they could bring it, but they couldn't take it away. So it shows that God is the only one who can heal. Amen. So she said, we're sorry we're going home. And said, we're so sorry. I said, now look, you know the girl's healed. Yes. I said, isn't God wonderful in healing? He said, yes. I said, you ought to see him in battle. Boy, he's wonderful. He said, you're not going over there. I said, well, you don't expect me to run, do you? I said, sure, I'm going over there. He said, Brother Abraham, the FBI is going to expose you. I said, expose what? What they got to expose? I said, I'm trying my best to be exposed. <laughs> I'm trying my best to get the gospel to everybody I can. I said, I'd like to be helped along a little. He said, you mean you're going over? I said, sure. I said, come and see the Lord in battle. You know, he's wonderful in healing. See him in battle one time. See what, how great he is there. I said, oh, he's marvelous in battle. I said, I've never seen him come in battle yet, but what, he'd come out in the victory, even when he put him in hell. He put his head, oh, his foot on the neck of the devil and took the keys of death away from him and rose on the third day. Even in death, he'd come out in triumph. said, Satan ain't got nothing on him. Well, I went over. That night when he got over there, 
They had the a custodian that had some little Spanish boys out picking up. Said, prayerfully written, divine healing may be right, but Simon the sorcerer's still on the job. And so I, well, I said, Brother Baxter, all of you, just leave the building, get back. There's about three or four thousand people, five there, just beating, just breaking. I said, I have a little ticket here that said I was Simon the sorcerer, and the FBI is going to expose me. I said, we might as well get that off for hand right now. Come on, you expose me up here. I want you to come. Wait a little while. I said, well, where are you at? Why don't you come on? So I waited, wondered what it was. I didn't know what it was all about. I noticed standing over to my right in the corner, a big black shadow standing there. I wonder, what's that for? I looked back again and moved from there, come across the people and went up in the balcony and hung over a man with a blue suit on, one with a gray on. A vision broke. <laughs> I said, it isn't the FBI. It's them two backsliding preachers sitting right there. They got down like this. I said, don't get down. I said, no, and two or four of them big Texans, rough-handed, they went to get him. I said, no, 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 don't do that. This is not a flesh and blood affair. Let him alone, because they would put a rope around his neck. So I said, don't do that. But let me show you something. If I am Simon the Sorcerer, I need to be exposed. You come down to this platform here, if I'm Simon the Sorcerer, and if I am Simon the Sorcerer, I'll drop dead on this platform. And if I'm a man of God, you come down and you're wrong. And I'm a man of God, you'll drop dead on the platform. And let the audience see who's right and who's wrong. And let God testify who's right. So they sat there a little while and I said, well, we always sang a hymn. We started singing a hymn. Up they got into the aisle and out they went. We waited for about 30 minutes and nobody never did come in. They haven't come in since. <laughs> sure. I said, I'm sick and tired of this stuff everywhere. God is great in battles. When he sent you, don't be scared. Stand there and see God's salvation. Said, stand still. There's only one who can produce salvation. That's God. No one else can bring salvation but God. He said, now stand still and see the salvation of God. Here come the army. Oh, when I think of it. Here come the army, the dust of roared. And when Moses stood still to see the salvation of God, the great pillar of fire that was hanging before them had led him into this trap, moved, went over, and stood between Israel and Pharaoh's army. And they had rejected the light, and any man who rejects the light receives the same thing they did. It become midnight blackness to them. The same light that made a light for the children of Israel to walk by Blind to the eyes of Pharaoh and his army. And the same Holy Ghost gospel that you call nonsense that will carry the church to glory darkens the eyes of the modern theologian tonight. The same Holy Ghost and power that resurrected Jesus Christ that stands in this building tonight blinds the eyes of the modern day preacher and his church. And that's the thing is blinded them has given life, hallelujah, since the resurrection of Jesus and the day of Pentecost. God will do it. Can't explain it. But if you don't accept light, it'll become darkness to you. You'll criticize and call it holy roar, and you might as well have a millstone hanged at your neck and drown the depths of the sea. You blaspheme the Holy Ghost. It is not forgiven. Say, so who speaks a word against the Son of Man for be forgiven? But if you speak against the Holy Ghost, it'll never be forgiven you. But all oh, you know so much. <laughs> so you made fun of the people that was in the Spirit of God, believing in divine healing and the resurrection of Christ and the powers of God. You made fun of, turned up your nose and walked out of church. I want to see what happens when you stand before the king who sent this message. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think you got it big, but just wait till the day comes. This is man's day. The Lord's day is coming. <clears throat> That's right. Notice how marvelous the same... I, oh, I done gone past. I better quit. <laughs> God in His power. Just a moment. God moving in His power. He said, Moses, what are you crying to me about? <laughs> Take your rod in your hand and raise up your hand and go forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here goes Moses. Right in his hand. Other hand up saying, We walk in the light. What a beautiful light. Comes where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. The angel of God going before him in a pillar of fire, leading them right down to the bank. And when they got there, she walled up for them. Hallelujah. And they walked right out of the trap. God displaying his love and power. When 
nothing else could help. <laughs> Amen. Satan's power, limited. Faith's power brings to pass God's revealed revelation. God helps those who cannot act and help themselves. The old dishonoring God proverb, it said God helps those who help themselves. How ridiculous. God helps those who can't help themselves. Amen. Oh, isn't he wonderful? The power of God. What it does. The power of God is the only thing that can give eternal life. The power of God is the only thing. It's the power of God that built a tree. All the science in the world can't build a tree. God's power built the tree. God's power keeps me alive. If God calls you, all the hospitals, oxygen tents, and pull motors in the world couldn't keep you here. Salvations of the Lord. It's God's power that feeds the sparrow. It's God's power that speaks to the little duck up there. There is nobody goes up there and shoes him off the lake and say, go on down to Louisiana. No, sir. It's God's power that shoots him off the lake. The little fellow don't know which way to go. It's God's power that directs him to the south. Hallelujah. It's God's power that directs him to Jesus Christ. It's God's power that brought the wise man to the cradle. It's God's power that thrills the soul of every believer. Amen. God's power to help those who cannot help themselves. Amen. You might have read the little book, a little story before closing. I'm a hunter, you know that. A lover of the woods. Here some time ago, about three, four, or oh, maybe... Three months ago, I was sitting with what I call my two students here, Leo and Jean, your boys from around here. They come down and follow me around. They were sitting on the porch and I was teaching them the things of God. A young woman in our town to give birth to a baby. And she didn't want it, so it's a beautiful young woman. And she took the baby and wrapped it in a blanket, put a wire around it, and took a taxi cab, went out on the bridge and dropped it in the river. They caught up with her. So we were sitting there talking to that. Mr. and Mrs. Woods here, the book salesman. They were there, just lived right across, just no door neighbors to me. The milkman would just come up. And sitting there on the porch that morning, hot as it could be, I noticed coming up the road and turned in, these four houses between me and the Arctic Springs, a woods over there. Here come an old possum dragging along. He went to every one of those places who did not have any fence and turned into mine, which has a rock wall and a fence. You start up through the, the driveway. Well, now, I understand animals a whole lot. I studied them. I was a game warden for years, and I love wildlife, live in it, study it. And a possum's blind in the daytime, like the owl. He travels at night. In the daytime, he doesn't travel unless he's disturbed and run out. Well, here comes this possum, and I wonder why he had turned right up there to my house. I said it may have rabies. So I told Gene and Leo here, I went out and got a rake. It was laying there in the yard where I believe Brother Woods had been using it, raking up the grass. And so... I, I laid the rake over the possum, and usually they what they call play possum, just grin and lay down. But instead of that, it bit at the rake. Now I wonder, well, I said, I guess it's either got rabies or it's just mortally hurt. I noticed here, excuse this, it's kind of nasty to say, but there were maggots all over it, the blows from flies. And the green flies are sticking all over it, and this leg had been chewed up by a dog or, or run over by a car or something, and it was broke, and it was dragging like that. Well, she, it was biting at that. And I happened to notice when she was so exhausted, when they laid the rake over, now a po- uh, kangaroo and a possum is the only two animals that has a pocket to pack their young in. And of course, that's carried up by, like by a nerve. It holds it together. And she is so exhausted until the pocket let loose. And I noticed why she was fighting so hard. She had nine little naked babies about that long. And when she did let down, well, then I said to the boys, I said, now, boys, come here and I'll show you a lesson. There's really more mother about this dumb brute, this possum, than there was about that woman that drowned her baby. That's right. I said, you see, that woman, healthy, young, beautiful, just so she could run to roadhouses and have a big time, she drowned that poor little innocent baby in the river. And I said, now this mother possum probably has another 20 minutes to live, or 30. She's mortally wounded. And I said, she can't live over 30 minutes, and she'll give that 30 minutes to fighting for them babies. 
I said, there's more mother and real morals about this possum there is about that woman. That's a, a woman's a wonderful thing, a man too, but when they got away from God, they're lower down than beast. That's right. They'll do things that a beast wouldn't do. So then I noticed. And so I took the rake off of her and she didn't hesitate a minute. Up she got right on up and laid right down by my steps. Well, I went up there and, and I punched her a little bit and she just wouldn't move. She was gone. They said, she's dead. I said, I don't know. I laid my stick on her. And, no, she wasn't dead. And those poor little baby possums is nursing from her, trying to. Oh, well, Mrs. Woods, she's sitting here, a lovely, God's born again Christian, if I ever seen one. But she's kind of a veterinary. She said, Brother Branham, the only human thing to do with that possum now is to kill it. Said, I tell you, Brother Branham, said, you see them babies are nursing from her and she's perhaps dead or will be dead in a couple of minutes. And said, the babies will die. See, he said, he'll just starve to death. And said, the only thing to do is take the babies and kill them and kill the old mother possum. Of course, you couldn't raise them. They're just little bitty things like that. Said, you couldn't raise them. I said, Sister Woods, I know that's right. But I said, I just can't do it. Well, she said, you're a hunter, aren't you? I said, yes, but I'm not a killer. I said, I, I just can't do it. And she, I said, them possums are edible. People eat those things and they're food. I said, I killed them anyone, but I kill it to eat. But I said, not, not just like that. And she said, well, let Banks do it. That's her husband, my dear good buddy. And um, I said, let Banks do it. And I said, I, I just don't want him to. Well, she just went ahead. That's all she could do. Well, the day had been long. I tried to feed the possums. She never moved them more than that poor little baby possums and trying to nurse. And then laying there in that hot sun, shining right down around. I thought, oh, my, what a sight. And her leg was swollen up way like that and blows all over it and the flies all around her. I tried to pour water on her, you know, to run them flies off. And they come right back again and all oh, gangrene in it and so forth. So I said, my, that's horrible looking. So a long night, Brother Woods come up. And he said, now, Brother Bram, you've been busy today. People coming and going and everything. So you better take a little ride. So he and his wife and my wife and I, we got in a car and rode way out through the country. We was riding along. And all at once, I believe my wife said, oh, did you see that little puppy laying there? And I turned around and went back. Well, I went out to pick him up. And that poor little fellow was just about that high and about that long. And he was so full of mange, it was cake on top of cake. And lice all over him. Or fleas. Just eat up. Now I said, poor little thing. Sister Wood said, I believe you ought to kill it. Said, cause it's just going to die. I said, I'm going to take him home with me, that poor little feller. And I went out and got me some mange cures and powders and doctored him up. And my, he's a big fine dog now. But <clears throat> then when I got, the, got back home that night about 10, 30 or 11 o'clock, there lay the old possum. Brother Wood said, she'll never move. Said, when it got dark, she would have moved. But she'll never move now. Well, she lay there all night. I couldn't get that possum off my mind. The next morning I went out, Billy come in, he'd been out fishing or somewhere, and he come in around midnight, and the old possum's still laying there. So I, the next morning, I went out about 6.30 or 7 o'clock when I got up, and went out, and there laid the old possum. Well, I thought she's dead. And I kicked her a little bit like that, and I seen a little kind of a grin like on the side when I was kicking her, and I said, my, and that poor little possum looked like they're just still trying to nurse her. And I thought, what a pity, she couldn't have strength to pull that pocket back again. Well, my little girl, Rebecca, you know, the one sets in a meeting and prays for the sick. And so then she come out and looked. She said, oh, Daddy, look at that poor thing. I said, isn't that awful, honey? And she said, oh, I can't look at it. And she went back in the house. Now I went into my den room. I sat down and put my hands up like this. I said, Ma, I guess today, I said, I don't know what I'll have to do with that possum. And I was sitting there thinking like that. And all I something said, well, said you was preaching a sermon about her yesterday, being a real mother. I said, yeah, I know that. And I said, I was preaching to Leo and Jean and them, tell her what a, and the, the milkman and all of them, what a real mother she was. That's right. I said, well, I said, you was talking about how she wanted to, uh, to take care of her babies. I said, yeah, that's right. And I said, well, uh, what about it? She said, well, I said, now, I sent her up here, and she's come and laid at your door like a lady for 24 hours, waiting her turn to be prayed for, and you never said a word to her. And I said, well, I... I thought, who am I talking to? I thought, well, what happened here? Who was I talking to? Well, I said, I was answering somebody. And just then I fell at you. And I thought, oh, God, was that you? Forgive your poor dumb servant. And I walked out there where that possum was. I'm meeting the judgment with this. Walked out there. I've seen it done other times. Not just the possum, but a thing. 
and walked down there where that possum was, and there she laid like this. I said, Heavenly Father, I said, I know that you show me visions of human beings and sick. You speak to their heart to come be prayed for. You show me, Brother Bosworth, the very vision, the very minute, and the angel of God beat the telegram here 24 hours from South Africa. Told me about him laying there like that. But is your sovereign grace to this poor old dumb brute? She had no soul. She didn't know no revelation. But the God of love, the God of life, who knows the sparrow, when even they're so insignificant to two of it takes to make a farthing. Jesus said, isn't two sparrows sold for a fourth of a penny? But your father knows every one of them. And hear that old possum? I said, if the Holy Ghost has led that old possum and she's laid here, a dumb brute, unconscious, God forgive me. I said, then and if, you want, if you also want me to pray for this, and you sent it here, and I was so dumb not to know it. I pray thee then, Father, in Jesus' name, heal this mother. And God, my judge. That old possum turned over and looked at me, raised up, gathered up her babies, and put them in her little pocket. Not a limp or anything. Looked back to me as if to say, thank you, sir. Went strutting down through the yard like that. Walked down to the gate. Went on to the place. Just as sound and well as she could be. What is it? The power of God. God rules in nature. Who hangs out the stars at night? What science could do it? Who sets the sun in the evening and rises it up in the morning? Who holds the world in its orbit? The power of God. Who holds your soul in its ring? The power of God. Hallelujah. The power of Satan is limited. The power of God is unlimited. I believe God. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee tonight for Jesus, the Son of God, for His mercy and for all that He's done for us. We thank Thee for the examples of the blessed old Bible. This dear old black-backed Bible is pointed the way for the pilgrim down through the age. We thank Thee, Lord, that Thy Holy Spirit moves over it like the Shekinah glory. May man open up that Bible, look into the face of it, and move into the holiest of holies, living under the Shekinah glory in the presence of Almighty God. Across the ridden veil, O oh, glory to His name, we thank Thee for Thy power. And tonight, Almighty God, come to this platform by the side of Your unprofitable servant and do that thing which Thou did do when You were here on earth that the people might know that man or science cannot produce it. It must come by the power of God. Who makes the flower to grow? Who puts the pink in one rose and the, the yellow in the other? Who paints the skies? Who takes the brush and fall the year and moves along with a white frost and paints leaves red and yellow? Hallelujah. The stroke of the Master. The God of all eternity. Who raises up the sick when they're laying in the shadows of death? God alone. I pray, Father, that in Jesus' name, that you'll move tonight and raise up the sick and the afflicted for your glory. Amen. I'm so sorry I kept you late. <clears throat> oh, I love him. Just to think we're living in the presence of the King. Yeah. You ever sing this old song? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have crossed the ribbon veil where the glories never fail. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am living in the presence of the King. Hallelujah. Cross the ridden veil where the glories never fail, where the Shekinah glory of God keeps alive. 
keeps from contaminating, keeps from indulging in the world and sets aside, sanctifies the believer, taking all the things of the world, all the doubt and darkness from his mind, and putting a pure heart, God writing his laws one time and put it in the table under the ark, and today the man living in the Shekinah glory under the mercy seat, God writes his laws upon his heart and preserves them. I don't want to get started again. Amen. I'm so glad that we can live in the presence of the King. I believe there's some K's and I's or J's. Or, is there anybody got prayer cards? K's. Let's see if I was right. All right, let's try somewhere from along there then. Get a few people come up. Let's see. Don't want too many. Let's see. Has anybody got prayer card K85? Raise up your hand. Look and see if you got a K85. And, yeah, the lady. That's fine. All right. 86. Who has 86? Raise up your hand. Would you? K86. All right. 87. Stay here. 87. All right. 88. Come right here. 89. Who has 89? Lady here, do you have 89? 89. Who has it? Raise up your hand, will you, if you can. If you can't tell the one sitting next to you, raise up your hand. 89. All right, fine. 90. All right, the lady here, 91. 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Who has prayer card 100? Raise up your hand. Prayer card K100. All right. Now, if we can get through this, let's start over the next, I believe, with J's or I's one. We'll start on some of them. Oh, do you love him? Isn't he wonderful? We used to sing a little song, faith in the Father, faith in the Son, faith in the Holy Ghost, three in the one. Demons will tremble and sinners awake, faith in Jehovah will anything shake. Amen. The devil hates that old jubilee song. Let's sing it together. Come on. Faith in the Father. Faith in the Son, faith in the Holy Ghost, three in the one. A demon will tremble and sinners awake. Faith in Jehovah will anything shake. Amen. Shake the sub tags of hell right in the devil's eyes. That's right. God will let them know who's to. Brother Grote, are you here? You know where I learned that song at? Henry Grote, are you in the building? Raise up your hand. Where is he at? I see him today. Well, back here behind me. <laughs> you remember singing that to us together? Out in the cornfield? My, my. <laughs> Wonderful. His daddy was praying for me. I have to say this. I said in the church today. His daddy, typical little Hollander, a little mustache. I don't know. Is he around? I hope he forgives me for this. He was down in our city. You know, it's like all other cities. There was a young lady came out of a store that was immorally dressed, little bitty old clothes like you wear here and everywhere else, you know, just indecently. Woman, listen, sister, honey, let me tell you something. Did you know what that is on you? That's an unclean spirit making you do that. That's right. It's the devil. You don't know it. I don't say you're immoral, but you're fooling with the wrong ground there. Nothing but an unclean spirit would do that. And she'd come out with her clothes like that. And little brother Grote, he's just a little joke right now. He said, oh, oh. He said, sister, you forgot your skirt. <laughs> Tucked me out in the cornfield and was praying with me. And he put his arm around me, got down to pray. He said, now, Papa God. He said, come on, heal, brother Brown. <laughs> Papa God. Where are you at, brother Grote? <laughs> he's around here somewhere. Oh, there he is, way back in the back with his hand up. You remember that day in the cornfield? Amen. He did it, Brother Grove. Amen. Oh, he's wonderful. I feel real good tonight, just so religious. Amen. Everyone love him? 
And now, what about it, brethren? That light's pretty rank, but have you, are you, uh, is the prayer line lined up down there, Brother Rasmus, or everybody that is lining him up down there? All right. Where you at, Brother Woods? Are you, will you help for me? I don't see Billy in him. You come over and help for me, if you will. All right. I wonder now. Well, that's all right. If you will, snap him. I believe it would be a good thing because it's, it's so powerful. And then looking right at the person, sometimes they get crossed up in the, while I'm talking to people. That's fine. Thank you, ever who did that. That seems a lot better. Why didn't I think of that a while ago? All right. Now, the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, come on the scene now as he did for Israel. Here I am in a trap. Moved up here. But I know what God has promised. He let the Hebrew children go in the fiery furnace to prove that he was God. He let Daniel go in the lion's den to prove he was God. He let Lazarus die and rot in the grave to prove he was God. Amen. And he can do the same thing tonight, can't he? He can prove he is God. Now, this lady standing before me, I suppose that... We are strangers, one of the Arby lady. We are. But there's one thing sure. There's somebody who knows us both, sister. That's right. And someday we'll stand in his presence and give account for everything we've done in this life. You're aware of that. i tell you, something happened. Just now, before saying anything else, the angel of the Lord come and anointed just now. Praise. It did just now. Praise Amen. be to God. You, it struck the lady even quickly. You know that. Something struck you when I went to say something. Is that right? That's right. Now, being a stranger to you, not knowing you, never seen you in my life, if God will let me know what's wrong with you or what you're here for, will you accept Jesus? You will. Will the audience do that? Yeah. Now, we're in His presence. And he could, he could take from us or He could smite us with a disease and we would die with it. He's God, so we must be reverent in His presence. You believe that, don't you? So, I see the lady. You're real nervous. Bother with a nervous trouble. Extremely nervous. And I see you've been to a doctor about something. It's, a, it's an infection. You have an infection. And a, that infection is in the breast. That's right. And it's in the left breast. And I see the doctor says that he don't know what it is, what's causing it. That's true. Now, that wasn't me talking. That was my lips saying the words, but I had no control of it. What it said is the truth. Is that right? Now, is Jesus raised from the dead? Yes. Remember, friend, that's what Jesus did when he was here on earth. That's Jesus tonight. Then... Here's what he said, the last words that he said when he was leaving the earth. I'll quote them to you. He led his disciples out as far as Bethany, and he blessed them. And he said, go ye into all the world. That was Chicago too, wasn't it? And preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be sa damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe to the end of the world. How long? To this gospel. How long? To the end of the apostles. To the end of the world. In my name they shall cast out evil spirits. Speak with new tongues. If they would take a deadly thing or a serpent, it wouldn't harm them. And if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. That's what he said. You believe that? Then him standing here present. You believe? I believe. That if I lay hands on you and pray... God's made a promise. If you believe that, you'll get well. Is that right? Then come forward. Our Heavenly Father, with hands laid upon this woman under a condition she don't even know herself and her doctor wouldn't tell her. But Lord, I pray that you'll be merciful to her and will heal her. I condemn this devil that's set in to take the life of the woman and come out of her, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. You're defeated. You spirit of death, you are defeated. We see the resurrected Lord. He's here. And by eyes of faith, we look beyond this shadow to where the sun is shining for our sister in good health. 
We do this in Jesus' name at His command. Amen. Now go on. You're going to get well. Amen. God bless you. All right, would you come then? Have faith. As you come, sister, believing with all your heart. Usually, oh, I, I want to get tired. I'm wore out, but it's the best thing because William Branham's gone. <laughs> then Jesus can talk. <laughs> I don't know you. Mighty saintly looking little woman to me. I never seen you. But God knows you. you. Don't look like there's anything wrong with you. But God knows whether there is or not. Isn't that right? Now there's someone in the audience. Move the Holy Spirit to them. I didn't get it. Now be real reverent. Don't move. Just sit still now. May I talk to you again, sister? Now I see the lady moving from me. Here it is back to her. She's extremely nervous too because she's worried. She's bothered about something. She's had an operation. And that operation was for a cancer. It wasn't too successful. And you're worried about it. But don't worry. You're standing in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a resurrection and life. You believe that? Come here just a moment. Heavenly Father, I bless this woman in the name of the Lord Jesus and pray that you will heal her and make her well through the power of God. Amen. God bless you, my sister. Go and believe with all your heart. Amen. How do you do? Now, there's that same dark spirit. Be reverent, everybody. Don't move around. Please don't. See, these things go from one to another, and you'll... What I'm doing that for, you don't realize that when cancer leaves here, it's going somewhere else. It sure is. And I can't hold it if you're moving. I can't tell where it's going. It's a dark shadow that I see. There's a cancer hanging over this woman right now. It's a dark shadow. If that shadow leaves her, how do I know what's wrong? It's by vision. And I see that dark death hanging around the woman. And she's sure to die if God don't help her. Well, when he leaves here, he's angry if he's put out. He'll find a place to go if he can. You know that's the truth? You remember in the Bible times when somebody's trying to cast out an epileptic spell, you know what happened? Who didn't really have the authority to do it? Now you're suffering with a cancer. It's a death. And only God can make you well. You believe? Now, being if someone moved, I just want to talk to you just a moment. You're not from this city. You've come from another city. And I believe it's, where's the, I see a tower? It's Joliet, Illinois. And your name is uh, Klein, Leona Klein. Now you go on back down home and get well. The darkness gone from you. God bless you. Have faith in God. Oh, my, how the devil has to recognize the supreme authority of Jesus Christ. Not me. He hates me. He don't have to mind me, but he has to mind who I represent. He has to mind who sent me here. Hallelujah. How do you do? You believe with all your heart, lady? I'm a stranger to you. You're stranger to me. But there's one in our midst who knows us both. Jesus Christ. If Jesus will tell me what's wrong, will you accept it then and believe it? All right, you just look this way. The reason I say look, Moses in the Bible erected a brass serpent, told the children of Israel to look and live. Is that right? He did. They was to look. Peter and John passed through the gate called Beulah said, look on us. That's the reason I say look. I want your attention. But I see a long strip of water. And it's not, you're not here for yourself. You're here for an aged woman. And that woman's suffering with a heart trouble. And she is your mother. And she's not in this country. And she is around somewhere that's, that religion is persecuted. And she is 
around somewhere, I see a Russian soldier marching along. She's near Russia. That's right. Right now, suffering with heart trouble. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will make her well. Do you believe it? Amen. Amen. Then go and believe with all your heart. And blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Have faith. Go on down. Come, lady. Come, believe me. You believe me to be the servant of the Lord? Have faith in God. I don't know you. But there's somebody here that we both know we're in the presence of. He knows us. Now you're here to ask me to pray for your eyes. You got an eye trouble. And then I see again. Here comes a stretch of water. And, and it's another country where there's a lot of hills. And it's beautiful. It's got a land of lakes. And there's someone there who looks a whole lot like you. It's your sister. And she's doctoring with some kind of something in her blood, a blood disease. And that's Sweden. Is that right? And that handkerchief is far. Well, go send it to her in the name of Jesus Christ. And may she be here. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. Do you believe? Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believeth. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. You believe it? Have faith. Yes, sister. Sitting there with a the red hat on looking at me. Your faith made a contact then. <laughs> The arthritis that you've been so lame with has left you. Uh -huh. Here you can praise be to God. Here, sitting right here, right down here, about three in on this row. You also had arthritis and a gallbladder trouble. If you believe, you may be. That's right, sister. Your faith made a contact with God. When that woman is healed, it struck you too. You're healed. Jesus Christ makes you whole. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Have faith in God. Jesus said, I can if ye believe. Do you believe? You believe you just healed that back trouble in case you sitting there in the chair just saying? You were. Amen. So just go on rejoicing. Amen. Saying thanks be to God. Come, lady. Blood diseases and things is just so easy for God to heal. You believe that, don't you? Let you and I go to Calvary for a transfusion. In Jesus Christ's name, I condemn the devil that bothered my sister and me. Come out of her in Jesus' name. Amen. Pass on by, sister. Go rejoicing. Believe me, God makes you whole. You can have what you ask for. Your kidney trouble's done gone, sister. Go on, come Hallelujah. Have faith. Your faith is. Believe with all your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Come here, lady. I want you to turn and look out this way. See that lady standing with a handkerchief over her mouth? She's suffering with the same thing you are. There's a black streak running from each one of you. It's arthritis. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now go on off the platform. Thank you, God. Be faithful. Glory. The Son of God lives. Dad, sitting there with your hand down praying right on the end of the row there. <laughs> yeah, he heard you. You were praying. I heard your prayer. You were silently praying, but he let me know your prayer. He said, Lord, let him call me next. Let it this time be my time. That's right. Yeah, you've had a nervous breakdown, haven't you? Mm -hmm. That's right. And you, you're not from this country. You're from a place I can spell the city. It's Uti Utica. Utica, Michigan. All right. You return home. Your breakdown's over. Your faith has made you well. Hallelujah. Jesus. Son of God. 
lives and reigns. You believe? Come, lady. You believe that female trouble left you sitting there? Or as it did, then. Amen. For what you have asked, that you receive. Believe. What do you think of that lady sitting right back out there? Watch that lady walked off. It was healed. You believe it? Yeah, you're suffering. You've got trouble with your eyes, haven't you? That's right. Sitting right here behind the lady with a white waist on. The angel of the Lord stands over her. Praise yeah. God. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. God answered my Is that wonderful, brother? He just now answered my prayer. That's Amen. Amen. That's fine. Hallelujah. i never seen you, lady, in my life, did I? <laughs> No, sir, I never. But you're not from here. You're from my state, Indiana. (laughs) That's right. Anderson, Indiana, at that, where the mills are. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The lady sitting right close to you there, she's suffering with a chest trouble. That's right. Uh Uh-huh. You're from Muncie, Indiana. (laughs) Just run on back home now, rejoicing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Have faith. Come here a minute, lady. I want you to turn around and look this way. There's just about 70% of those people suffering with your condition. That's right. How many suffering with nervous trouble? Raise up your hand. See how the spirits are pulling? How many believes that Jesus is here to heal you? Raise up your hand. Now go home. It's over. Amen. God bless you. Let's say praise the Lord. I want to ask you, lady, the same time I said for them, you had the same thing. And when I was said that, something come over you, didn't it? All right, you're healed now from that nervous condition. Menopause, go home believing. What do you think, lady? You believe with all your heart? I don't know you. I've never seen you. God did something. Amen. You're here praying for someone else. It's a friend of yours. And I see a great church and the little statues and things. Your friend is a converted Catholic and she's got cancer. And the cancer's on her face. All right, take that handkerchief to her. And in the name of Jesus Christ, may she recover and be made well. Do you believe? Then in Jesus Christ's name, stand on your feet and receive your healing. While I pray for you. Almighty God, I cast out every devil. In the name of Jesus Christ, may he depart from these people tonight. And go, Satan, you're condemned. Amen. As the faith catches God standing present, come out of them, Satan, in Jesus Christ's name. Raise your hands and give him praise. Amen. Amen.